So, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the third episode of Scholars Spotlight podcast that we've just started. Um, this is the third one and we've got another special guest um, here today. So, a, a big hello uh, to Ant Fawcett, who's Chase Town FC's youth chairman and under-18's girls manager. How are you, Ant? I'm very good. good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're well. We've got lots of questions for you, mate. So I hope you're ready for a bit of a grilling. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I can imagine. I can Im Should we get down to it? Let's go for it, mate. Let's go for it. Okay. So posh job tile, what what do you actually do? Uh, a lot of delegating. <laughs> <laughs> I'd heard. I've heard mastered that. the art of delegate. No. So um, as well as obviously my first, my first love was, of course, doing the coaching. Um, you know, you mentioned there that I've uh, coached the under-18 girls team, which is our oldest girls team now. Um, and I've been doing that for a long time. That's since they were probably nine, ten years old. Uh, is that and that's the, same, been the, is the same squad? Pretty much. There's a There's been a core of players that have been the same squad since they were sort of nine, ten years old, which is which is fantastic. Um, and that's one thing I'm massively proud of. And the fact that they're now you know, going to be representing Chase Town at, at the Scholars Ground with a new 3G on a Saturday morning. And, and you know, that is uh, brilliant. And I think I've said before, my aspiration, hope is that maybe some of them um, will 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 make up the, the the ladies team or one of the first ladies teams that we'll have at uh, Chase Town. So that's, that's obviously my, my big thing. And then the, 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 being the chairman of the youth section is, um, you know, certainly... In terms of what we do, what I do is, I think like anything, you 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 get involved, you get engrossed in certain things. I never thought I was going to be the chairman of the youth section, but in terms of what I do now, it's using that platform and, and being almost a bit of a guardian for it, really. Taking for what it was when I picked it up, trying to make it better, and then hopefully whenever I you know, decide to... Uh, hang uh, my boots up in that respect then I've left it in a better place for someone else but we we give a lot of autonomy to the managers and everything else so they have a we try and guide and steer them to how we you know we want them to act to uh, how we want them to 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 be and and give them and give the kids and the managers the best you know environment for them lot to all succeed and reach their goals really how many teams is that um we 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 were over forty teams. We're over forty teams. I mean, um, you know, when you're adding all the teams, you know, we we are touching, um, you know, with the youth development pathway as well as the first team. You know, we're touching we're touching close to fifty teams now, um, oh, wow. with over forty that are for the youth section. And you know, we've still got ambitions of of growing. Um, as as some of the committee members know, I kept on saying fifty by fifty because uh, we're celebrating our fifty year anniversary this year so uh as for a youth section so um yeah i've, I've kind of you'll end, up, you'll, end up being, you'll end up being like al pacino in godfather three you know just when you think you're out they'll suck you back in you know so okay yeah. well that moves us quite nicely into the second question which actually is a phrase that 10 years ago we wouldn't have really talked about but it's hugely in the psyche now it's about inclusivity so I wanted to kind of talk about this early doors, really. Can you tell us, and you touched on it a little bit, about your plans in regards to introducing disability teams and further girls teams as well? What are the plans there, Anne? So to, to credit the Staffordshire FA, we've been, they've been very supportive when we've come up with ideas. The, the big thing that we've done through our accreditation now, and we're, a, we're really proud that we're a three-star accreditation, we developed a five-year plan. And within that five-year plan, it gives us a platform of where we know we're missing and what we're doing right and, and where we're concentrating our efforts really into the right areas. So when we first, obviously, I came over to Chase Down, we only had one girls' team. That quickly developed into two girls' teams. So the one thing we, you know, I set out from, uh, from the beginning was to help and try and grow the girls' section. And I've, I've been supported massively by... Uh, other coaches, um, two names I will say is, you know, certainly Steve Curley and, and, and Steve Rucker who helped out with that, who were 
you know, we were all together as one for these girls' teams. So we definitely wanted to make sure we built that up. And we used the Wildcats platform to do that, which is the FA um, sort of promotion in terms of girls' football, just for girls. And we've been doing uh, the Wildcats now for just over a year. And we've already built up two teams from that, which is our under-10s and our under-11 Lionesses. The other thing that we knew that we wanted to do um, and we've had to, you know, it's probably taken a bit of time to get there is offer disability football. Um, we had a couple of passionate coaches that were really, you know, for their own um, in circumstances, really wanted to try and offer that. And that's what we worked as a committee to try and get that off the ground. And just these last two weeks, we're, we're coming up to tonight, our third session, where we're offering uh, kids with a range of learning disabilities or uh to between the ages of four and 11 uh, to come along and, and just try out football, you know, give them something that, you know, is a bit different, fun environment, just get a ball. And, and as soon as you do that, sometimes there's smiles on faces and that's what we're hoping to do with this. And will that be at Chase Town as well? Will that be at the home ground? So we haven't done it at the home ground at the moment because okay. what we found when we started looking into it, that we found that the environment made the needs to be catered for a little bit in terms of the dare disabilities and 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 yeah, com- make it as comfortable as possible for them so we've been very fortunate that we again working with one of our venues that we have of many venues that we have uh we've used chase terry's uh school and the uh, the big indoor sports hall there so that's where uh, we've got two fantastic coaches martin and chris um who have um been involved in that and are taking the sessions so we've adapted it a lot very much to you know those and we're still learning with it you know there's still people who are coming uh that have a slightly different you know needs or requirements so we're tailoring it as much as we can to to each individual's needs no that's uh, that's that's fantastic and if there is anybody out there any families moms or dads anybody with a disability themselves watching how do they get in touch how do they become part of that well, the big thing that we always say is, you know, look at our uh, social media platforms. You know, certainly our Facebook page gives you all the direction you need to either contact us directly through the messenger part or they can ring up uh, Jane Dyson. Jane is our uh, general secretary for the uh, youth section um, and she's been great as well in, in getting this all set up. Uh, I mean, Jane's great anyway, but she's, been, she's really been, um, she's really shown a passion about getting these disability sessions uh, up and running. So, um, they can direct to any questions and uh, that they want me through Jane and the website, uh, so the Facebook page, and there from, therefore we can uh, just get going from there. Okay, super. Cheers, Ant. So, what's the biggest challenges that you've faced or that you're facing from the youth development section, and how important is the volunteer work alongside that to 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 reach those goals and and kind of crush those challenges one by one? Um. The volunteers are everything. You, you, you know, uh, it wouldn't happen without the volunteers, and that goes from those that are on the committee to the managers themselves um, and the coaches. You know, they wouldn't be teams without coaches and their volunteers. And I think sometimes we we forget about that. You know, and and that was one thing. You know, again, having come from the you know where my background was when I first started, is that recognizing them and trying to give them a bit more support in terms of their needs and what they want to do because they are everything we wouldn't be able to do what we do without someone's going do you know what i'll take that team on um and that's so important and coercing someone to put their hand up that is a challenge um but richard um who runs our soccer school and also our wildcats has been has been very good in coercing richard and emma have been very good in coercing people into doing that so getting volunteers is always difficult um venues is is probably my biggest uh come to a manager's meeting and you'll hear me uh talk about venues and that's our biggest headache um but i will say this we're very fortunate to work with some cracking venues in the you know local community i mentioned there chase terrace uh school there's obviously eda school litchfield sports club as well uh they've been very supportive um as have a number of other schools and venues that we use and what we're trying to do there is Again, the uh, Burwood Institute, where we have a pitch there, we spread across so many venues, um, and it's trying to get them, to, you know, to 
come with us a little bit on the journey where we try and improve the venues. You know, we want to we want to get the best grass, we want to get the best best facilities that we can. But finding them and having them and improving them is a challenge. Um, and just on that note, you know, it's it struck me even more when I had someone from the staff say, "Hey, come and see us," and they said they're north of the county. There's probably a bit more open space. Whereas you come to the south of the county, it's a lot more uh, densely populated, and therefore, you know, the, the green open spaces there are a few, but it's you know, it's, it's very few and far between. And we know that that's a massive challenge in, in getting these areas where we can, you know, create a home and create a hub. We're very lucky that we've got Chase Town Football Club, and even more lucky now that we've got this excellent 3G facility that gives us a little bit of a hub. But it doesn't match all our needs, but it definitely answers a lot of our needs. Yeah, probably be remiss not to talk about Saturday. It was our big homecoming, so it's the first time we'd we'd been at home for about six to eight months, really, against Witten Albion. We won three two. You enjoyed the day? Loved it, loved it. Come come away from the ground, buzzy, and it's them moments that you come away and go. Do you know what? I'm really glad and pleased to be involved in this club. Um, no, absolutely. And- Another highlight, you know, and so many, great to see so many of the youth section there as well, enjoying it. And that's just the, the coaches, the kids, and all of them looking at the facility, saying how good it is. I've heard so many wows, which is just fantastic. And uh, the fact that they get their chance to have a go and play on there is even more uh, fantastic. So it's brilliant. Yeah, I, I felt exactly the same as you. When you can hear strangers and you've not seen their faces before and they're just super impressed with the facilities and the infrastructure and the people behind it. It was it was a fantastic day. Um, you've got a nickname of Ant's Pants, right? And I've been trying to get <laughs> I've been trying to get to the bottom of it. And apparently it comes down to a flapping incident because you were a goalkeeper, right? So talk us through this flapping incident. When, when did it happen? What's it all about? <laughs> well, I knew this was probably going to uh, come up. So first and foremost, I didn't actually start in goal. I played out. Right, okay. Yeah, you know, going back to the Hamwich years and Hensford yeah. years, but then quite quickly, uh, it turned out, you know, I had to, you know, end up in goal. And I had the, the nickname before that, I will add. Oh, okay, okay. However, probably judging by some of my performances, the uh, the nickname got re-emphasised a little bit. But I know Clucker, uh, Ian Clark, who mentioned it, I can't remember it being a, a, a semi-final, I will admit that. But yes, that, that incident where I... Did fall over backwards and the uh, the ball went over me. <laughs> did happen, and ever since then I've been trying to improve the Burntwood Institute pitch because I can tell you now there is definitely a Burntwood bubble there, and I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, how do the teams prepare during the off season? And again, you know, you've talked about Facebook being a great pathway for people to get in touch that want to be involved. But talk us through that kind of pre season and what preparation goes into it. Well, we never have an off season. It seems I keep saying we're going to have some downtime, and we never do. Um, but during that that summer period, you know, that's where again we we really want to drive the wildcat sessions. We really want to drive the soccer school. And you know, Richard and Emma I mentioned there do a fantastic job with our uh, football school, soccer school, where they automatically get about two teams, two teams under sevens, under eights every year. Uh, and then we obviously try and build in for new teams. Um, we find out how many teams we've got. We hope that we maintain as many teams, but inevitably with different age groups, you know, that can drop off. So there's a lot of work that goes into, you know, the venues, again, preparing the venues, knowing who's going to be where, um, allocations for training, allocations for match days, and then, you know, kit orders and stuff like that. It's it's relentless, to be fair. It is relentless, but does sound, again... It does sound utterly relentless, yeah. But again... The committee who were who were involved have, have been absolutely fantastic, and again, I wouldn't, you know, do what to do it without them because they've been brilliant and so very supportive in everything that we've done. There was a lot of questions about the goals and aspirations for the rest of the season, you know, for your your group of teams. I guess that's hard for you to say because there's so many teams, and of course, they'll have different objectives. But does anything stand out for you as a team that you wanted to achieve this year? that you think you might be able to? I mean, I, I go back to the aspiration was always to have a bit of a hub. And I think, you know, we've we've now started to, we haven't moved on to doing training on there yet. We're going to do there, you know, full time on, on January. Having that will be 
brilliant, a massive, uh, big tick in the box that we wanted. And I, again, you know, I mentioned Mike, our committee and, and the, the volunteers there, but, you know, a lot of kudos has to go to, to Steve and the rest of the directors. You know, they've been absolutely phenomenal in supporting us. And whereas probably before we worked a little bit in silos, you know, we're a lot more joined up now. We're a lot more aligned in, aligned in our thinking, that one club mentality, you know, obviously with the pathway as well, it, you know, it's fantastic that we're all trying to do it for a common cause. And, you know, get onto the 3G was a massive aspiration of us anyway to get a, a better facility in that respect. And we got that. A couple of years ago, we won Club of the Year, Grassroots Club of the Year. You know, that was one of the big moments that, you know, um, I'll always be very fond of and, and, and look upon. It'd be great if we could do that or we'll make that kind of achievement again. But what I have really... Who votes for that, Anne? So that is uh, where nominations go into the, the County FA, again, Staffordshire F, uh, County FA. Um, and we won it for the 21-22 the season. Um, and that was a, a, a fantastic, even still got the award here. So, Get up there, my boy. So, you know, that that was a really proud moment for the, uh, for the whole chase. You know, it's all of us, really. It's not just the youth section. It's all of us, really. But, you know, from that, we'd love to do that again. But can't believe sometimes that the, the teams and what they achieve individual teams i mean the last couple of years some of the the team the, the what they achieved you know whether it's a cup run or a, or a winning a cup competition but even some of the other things about how these players developed how these kids enjoy you know maybe something's been going going on in their own private lives and this and then they've come out of it and they've used football as a platform to be you know a better person or, or, or get yeah. over something, you know, it's it's fantastic. That's I think that's great that's achievement stuff, as well. That's the stuff we don't see sometimes, right? But the stuff that we get the most from. But that that translates lovely into the next question around player development. Um what opportunities do you provide for individuals to improve skill levels and have their own approach to the game, their own unique approach? Because that must be a real challenge with so many teams. Yeah, I go back to what you know I was saying earlier about how we try and guide and steer. You know, we we, we obviously give the coaches the autonomy to run their team and, and, and what we try and do is help and direct them and be a support to them as well. You know, we... Over the last couple of years, certainly, you know, we've had more events that, you know, lead into sort of welfare. We've built up our welfare team and uh, massively now. But in terms of the coaches and direction, we, what we're trying to do there is, you know, talk about equal game time. We've talked about, you know, developing the player that will only develop the team. We're looking to put on some coaching CPD events uh, at the Trace Town Club now. We've talked with the Staffs FA about doing that. The Staffs FA are already doing some. We help coaches who come to us new, you know, anyone that says, I'll oh, put my hand up, right, let's get you on a, an FA level one coaching course. So we get them on that. We we actually pay for the coach to do that as well. That's not out of their own pocket. We'll, we'll subsidise that. And even coaches who've got aspirations to being level two, we, we help and support them in that as well. Because if the coaching's better, then the, what the kids' environment and the kids' learning will be better. Um, yeah. And, you know, Further on from that, that's why, you know, you had a inter great interview with, with Bunchy and, you know, one of the things that we did identify a while back is that we, we were missing that that further development, you know, for the gifted and talented players there. Can we give them a platform? Can we give them a um, another area where they, they can cater for those needs? But And that's where they've come into it and, and it's fantastic to see. We have seen a couple of players who came from the grassroots side go into the youth development side and who knows what they can go on and, uh, and achieve we'll see but we try and do as much as we can to develop the coaches that obviously help develop the players um and give them the best environment for them to learn no that sounds fantastic especially what you're doing with the coaching as well i didn't realize that myself so that, that is great to hear um how do you balance out players becoming better footballers or kids becoming better footballers and their studies do we have any kind of saying that or can we help them balance those two things oh um, i think this is where again we talk about alignment you know bunchy i know mentioned about you know making sure for the youth development that they you know they look concentrate in their studies or especially the older age groups and and you know alongside football you know i've gone through 
probably more so with my team recently with the uh, the under eighteen girls, where they a lot of them did GCSEs last year, and you know that's where you have to, you know, think about how long the session goes on for because of obviously you know revision and 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 ex- exam time and focusing on that. So it is a balance. It's it's always a balance. You know, there's even kids who are doing Sats and stuff like that. You know what I mean? The pressures that come with it. I suppose really from a grassroots point of view. We see it as footballs to release, you know, get that release, get them out from their studies for an hour or a bit yeah. on a yeah. on a weekend and on a weekday, and you know, have that release that they they they, they need sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So, as a parent yourself, I think you know this will this will resonate. How do we support parents and and communicate directly with parents about how their kids are doing, how they're progressing? So yeah, I mean that's. One thing that, again that we're we're looking at trying to improve in we you know we, we again we I'll, I'll go back to this five year plan that we we kind of developed you know we we talked about things like venues but also talked about the the, the the child's experience and I think one thing we we are trying to do encourage coaches that you know they speak to the team as a whole but also as well try and speak to individual players about you know um, what they what they've been doing great at you know what things they might want to look to improve we want we want to probably give as well more of a voice to the 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 the, the kids we we want to try and look at this um like a youth council so we've got representative from different age groups so they can tell us how they feel about their experience with chase town and listen to what their needs are rather than us probably dictating it a little bit so we want to try and get now more feedback from the kids about what they enjoy what they want to learn it is it the football side of things is it something completely different so we are looking to try and do a bit more of that we we, we do see some good things and we we were always trying to better ourselves but there's definitely some things that we can improve on and that's maybe one of the things there okay um so in regards to successes throughout the season obviously with so many so many teams you're going to have a lot of successes but also a lot of failures i guess right how do you try and celebrate those successes during the season? So is there a, a typical way that, say, if one of our teams wins a cup or if one of our players does something sensational in-game, might be a hat-trick, might be man of the match or whatever, how, how do we celebrate the little victories, as I like to call them? Yeah, I think what we're trying to do is, you know, with our social media side of thing, with the Facebook page and everything, is, is to put their... You know, it might be, we, we've certainly done a lot where teams have obviously gone on to win leagues. We've also gone on to celebrate when teams have uh, won a cup and everything. And even if they haven't and they've had a good cup run, you know, we, we've obviously highlighted that. So we're asking the managers as well to to give us those good news stories so we can, you know, spread it out within our, our Facebook page. But also as well, when we come to presentation evenings and everything, it's nice to get that feedback from the coaches about what they've achieved and, Make sure that that's celebrated, you know, at the end of the season. And the managers are great at doing that. Some of the presentation uh, I've done, you know, you might have one or two teams that have hardly won a game, but what they have done is highlighted how well the, the players have developed, um, how well they've done, and that achievement that they got in one of the games, you know, or two of the games. You know, it's it's brilliant, and the managers do that very well from the from what I've seen when I go to the presentation nights. Okay, all right, so. We've come to our last question. We've had about 20 minutes, and so I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for that. Um, if you could think of, just in the mind's eye, right, a gigantic Father Christmas type character, right? Maybe Steve Jones, right, our chairman. What would be one wish now that you would want granted for the rest of the season ahead? Just one wish. You might have touched on it earlier, actually. I can't remember what I said earlier. Now, um, I think one wish. Um, I think it comes down to, you know, the success of the of the youth section going forward. Um, bit, to go back to the three G is going to be monumental for us, and that venue is going to be hopefully a great communal place where we're all there. Can we then elaborate on that? Can we get that? You know elsewhere or, or update some of our other venues and facilities. I hope so, but that's never going to happen in one season. So I think just for this season, let's enjoy what we've got um, and, and make the most of that. Absolutely. Um, 
that's the third one of Scholar's Spotlight done. So anybody watching, if you want anybody else interviewed, if you've got other, any other questions, please use the Facebook group. And Ant Pants, thanks again, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for your work. Thanks, Matt, and thanks for all the work you've been doing on this. It's uh, it, it, It's been brilliant. You've uh, definitely doing it your way, that is for sure, mate. Appreciate it. Top, man. Speak soon, man. Bye. Peace, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.